In this little series here in video, we're going to learn something uh, special about transition metals. We're talking about transition metals here. Those are the ones that are found right here in the middle, what we call the D block of the periodic table. They're metals, but they're unusual. As you can see in this, uh, if you look at group 1A, they like to form plus 1 charges. Group 2A, 2 plus 2 charges all the time. You'll never see a magnesium plus one or a magnesium plus three. It's always magnesium plus two. Sodium, potassium, lithium, these guys are all going to be plus one. And then you come over to the other side of the periodic table and you see some trends there for group 5A, 6A, and 7A. This is what it is most of the time when they make anions for the nonmetals. See the nonmetals? Like to make non uh, anions, so they like to gain electrons. And all these metals like to uh, lose electrons. Now there's something about transition metals, and actually we'll see it with tin and with lead and uh, bismuth as well, but these larger uh, middle of the road here metals have a very hard to predict charge. It's very easy for them to lose one or two or three or four. It's like they can't decide. Now in common, or in general, you'll see plus ones or plus twos or plus threes, but yeah, look over here, titanium plus four. And so it's very hard for transition metals to predict what charges. Remember that. That's very important. These guys are gonna have we're gonna have to deal with these a little bit different. And we're gonna see some of that in this video. So it's hard to predict a charge. So if we don't know the charge, um, we're gonna have to do something about the naming when we're talking about them a little later. But there's something unusual about predicting its electron configurations that we need to figure out in this video. So if we were to make a prediction of what the ionic uh, electron configuration would be for a transition metal ion, I can't emphasize that enough. I'm not talking about group one and group two metal ions, and I'm not talking about the other, uh, the non-metal. So we've done some of those already in other videos. But in this one, it's transition metals. You've got to be very focused on that. Let's take a look at one here, uh, iron. That's in the 3D uh, block there. This is its, um, you can see here, iron as an uh, element. It's uh, noble gas configuration for the electron configuration. And what would we predict, you know, what would be the electron configuration for the iron plus three? This is what we would do. We would say, well, if I lose uh, one electron, this is what we'd normally do. And it's going to be wrong, but this is what you should be thinking how you would normally do it. Well, we lose an electron, let's take it out of that or outer orbital, 3D5, we go down to for a plus one iron. Plus two iron, okay, let's take it out of the D again, it's on the outer orbital. Uh, so we're down to four, if I get the uh, 3D4, now I should get 4S2, 3D5, 3D3 uh, for the iron plus three. That's what you would predict for an iron plus three. Turns out, that's wrong. What? How do we know? Well, it doesn't uh, predict the properties. Oop, I see a typo in here. Got an extra I in there. Transitional metals. So if that's wrong, then what do we do? How do we get better predictions of things? Well, when you see that you need to write an electron configuration for an iron here, or any of these D blocks, this is what you got to do to pick it uh, to um, to get the correct electron figure configuration that predicts its properties. We actually going to remove, there's only one other thing you can do, and that's remove electrons from the S orbitals. Not a whole lot of things you can do. So remove them from the S. So if you're dealing with uh, uh, transition metals, we're going to take them from the S, then the D. So if we need to get rid of three electrons for the iron plus three, we're going to take two away from uh, the 4S orbital. And so that goes away. And we're going to then, that takes away two electrons, and then reduce the 3D6 down by one so that we now have the right number of electrons. And so the actual electron configuration for this transition element is argon 3d5 that was completely different than what we had than before and uh, this actually does a better job of predicting like its uh, magnetic properties and uh, its reactive properties versus the other one and so remember if you're dealing with uh, transition metals then we're going to lose the electrons first from the s then the d so this gives uh, transition metals another crazy characteristic that we can add to that list um, that we started with here so remember, where's the transition metals? Right there in the middle of the periodic table. 
that's what we're talking about here in their weird electron configuration. So we have a hard time predicting their charges. Uh, we're going to have to do something special with the naming, and we see that uh, the electrons are lost first from the S, then from the D. Transition metals, oh, you try to trick us. So they have some really cool, unusual properties. That's why we need to talk about them, and that's why they're all over chemistry. That is our transition element electron configuration um, video talk here.